still start the scripture lesson this morning. Ephesians 1, 17 through 23. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparable, incomparably <laughs> great power for us who believe, that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Amen. I'll now um, introduce and invite um, Dan Tab up um, to join us. He is definitely a member of our family here and um, our mission committee um, through door um, deposits in the basket um, has supported this ministry for some time and so we're excited to hear from him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. We're still morning. Uh, because we sprung ahead, it doesn't change anything. We're still morning here. Um, and then, uh, so family, right? This is family. When we come to a house of God, it's the family of God. Yeah? Yes. And uh, it's a kingdom, right? The God, God created a kingdom, did he? Right? He, didn't, he actually didn't come to build a, you know, a, to create a building. He didn't actually really come to make, make buildings throughout the world. He actually came to make a family, a kingdom of God, a kingdom that would actually come to this world and show this world, display to this world who he is. That was his original plan from the beginning. Unfortunately, man and woman disturbed that. And they actually went on their own path. Is that right? Yes. Does everybody know the Bible? That's what, that's what actually happened. And so we are actually at the kingdom. Jesus had to come back and actually start everything over again. Just like Noah did. Remember, Noah actually had to start over again because the thing had just gone a mess so bad. Because of the people. And so Jesus came back and did the same thing. And he actually said, we, I am coming. And the kingdom of God has come. It's come now. In my, in my reading, I have actually created the kingdom of God here and now. And he actually created the family of God. That whoever believes in him becomes part of his family. And I'm actually blessed because I have my family right here. We have my mother-in-law, Jean, my niece, Bethany, and my cousin, Brenda. Uh, so all this is very good for me. I don't know if I ever had that many people in my family uh, come to hear me speak. <laughs> 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 But it's great. It's an amazing story. I, I know there's a God because of even looking at you guys. I mean, in your lives, God has done amazing work, a transformation. And I know my story, but I know your stories as well. God is real. God is alive. He is, he is he's with us. He can transform things suddenly in a blink of an eye, no matter what's going on. So even today, as you come in, just remember where you just have entered into. You have entered into the presence of God. You have left the world to come here. Hopefully you never go back into the world. Even as you leave this place, we're not called to go back into the, the world's ways. We're supposed to go back in with the presence upon us. We're supposed to show the presence of God. We're supposed to live in such a way that the glory of God goes with us everywhere we go. That everyone actually becomes part of the kingdom as the way we are. And then we go through a, a message. All right? So this is a miracle that's about to happen as well. Gene can attest to this. Yeah. Bethany has heard me many times. It's a miracle to try to get me done in 35 to 45 minutes to do both a, a ministry stuff and a message. That would usually be about 45 hours. Yeah. So here's, here's Tab Tribe again. I've been over there 16 years. I come from the Tab clan here in Springfield, Massachusetts. Hungry Hill, home of the Irish is where we, they, they shifted from. 1927, my granddad came from Cove in County Cork in Ireland. And his, he's 12, his family, and it lived in Hungry Hill, home of the Irish. And the, they rose up and they did a lot of sports stuff, a lot of coaching. And the, the, if you ever, anybody here play hockey? 
not many in hockey here, but my, my tab, the tabs, they actually own all the hockey rinks in this area, uh, the Olympic, Olympia and uh, um, Springfield, uh, there at Bunk Park. But uh, a lot of us athletes, white, especially hockey, would be pretty much the, the main thing there as well. But this is my tribe. This is, uh, we went over a 16 years ago, Call of God. I was actually selling insurance. We went to school, but I always started sports ministry. And just blew my mind is, well, why is my parents going to do this work? And uh, it's just not me. It's actually all of us. We're all of this time, especially to do something special. It's amazing. And it's just, it really, truly, when I, when, it, when, the, when I heard those words from the Holy Spirit, it was like, wow, that is who I am. And the, the only verse the whole weekend that, uh, that, that had spoken that had been spoken yet was Ephesians 2:10. And just to remind you, I'm sure many of you are aware of it. This is now my ministry mission in, in scripture verse: is we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which He prepared in advance for us to do. So God spoke to me, go to Ireland, start his worst ministry, and he flooded my mind and said, why I was prepared to go do this work? It was amazing. I'm like going, yeah, this is who I am. It wasn't me getting demoted or me getting shipped off to Ireland. It was actually a promotion. This is, I love God, I love kids, I love Ireland, I love sports. It was amazing. So none of this is a sacrifice. It's what I'm designed to do. It's a joy. It's not work. It's really just uh, for me. I get encouraged and, and, and energized by actually doing what I do. The beautiful girl there is my wife, Amy. That's Jean's daughter, if some of you know. But uh, And then just this year, we actually had uh, Liberty. Uh, she was born seven months ago. Be very careful as to who your models are. Yeah, who you actually, who you, your mentors are. So I actually, I love Abraham. Yeah? <laughs> Abraham and Sarah, you know? So they had shot children late in their life. Yeah? So my wife wanted one more child. She said, let's, let's give her one more chance, you know? And uh, I got married late. Uh, we had a our first child, Jaden, late. And then uh, our middle child, Seddon, and then Liberty just came. Uh, 55 years old and had a seven month old baby. <laughs> but the beauty of this is that that girl is so smiling. She's always just smiling. She sleeps. The, the middle guy never slept for two years. Didn't sleep at all. Amy and I were almost very close to the horse. Thanks for Jean and her counseling. We stayed together. And then, uh, but thankfully, uh, Seven does sleep now. He's a great joy. That kid is so handsome. My, my wife just can't stop kissing him and biting him and stuff like that. He's so edible. And, uh, and our oldest boy is Jaden. His birthday was Friday. He's 11. Seven birthday next month is five. Uh, and so, yeah, Jaden loves soccer. Sennon loves, he just joined school with Jaden, so he loves doing that. Um, and then Liberty just, again, just, uh, I, the beauty of actually her is Amy is so in love. She, she, I, the pressure is off me. She doesn't even ask about me. She doesn't want to work, just ask where Dan is. It's like, oh, where's Liberty? Give me Liberty. And serotonin is just kicking off all over the house. So it's great. Um, so, again, yeah, God, family, uh, uh, others, and then myself. So, again, first and foremost in our life, God has to be number one. What was the first commandment again? Love your God. What's the second commandment? No idols. Yeah? No, they have no idols before him. And that's what the thing is. God, idol, idolatry is really bad. That's, why I, that's how I actually came to, to get the mission. Was Actually, I had been in a great walk with God, and also there was at the retreat, they said anything before God. If there's anything in your life before God, you've got to give it up. And so in my life, at, at that point, I was, I was in such a great place with the Lord. I was actually living uh, at Bethany's dad's house by myself. And, uh, and I just, it was an amazing journey with the Lord. And I said, after the retreat, I just said, Lord, just my insurance practice. That's the only thing that's left, you know, as uh, maybe potentially something before you. I give up to you right now. Uh, I, it's your business. I will be your partner, but it's your business. And literally, as soon as I did that, I, and actually I said, I, I'll start doing less work, 20 hours a week, and I'll start doing more ministry, which I just started doing ministry through the church with inner city kids uh, uh, down in South Bend. And all of a sudden, like, boom! As soon as I said it, the Lord hit me and said, that go to Ireland, start sports ministry. So idols can disturb your destination. Idols can disturb what the Lord has prepared in advance for you to do. Idols is very bad. Is there anything in your life before God? If there is, I would actually really contemplate that strongly with regards to laying it down. Because what's that doing is preventing from better things. <coughs> my email address, if you'll see it in my, 
I'll have a table out there later on with some brochures and stuff if you want. But I, I S 5589. <laughs> Looks like a weird email address, doesn't it? And then it goes at yahoo.co.uk, making it weirder. But IS5589 is Isaiah, Isaiah 5589. My ways are not your ways. My plans are not your plans. I, my plans are higher than your plans, and my ways are better than your ways. So if you want the best for your life, does he want to give you the desires of your heart? Yeah. He does. That's what he says. He said, I want to give you the desires of your heart. Look at Psalm 37. I want to give you the desires of your heart. Who put them there? He did. Who knit you together in your mother's womb? He did. Psalm 139 says it very clearly. He put you together in, his mother, in your mother's womb. He put your soul, your spirit, your heart. Yes, you might have your parents' eyes or their, your, their hair or their height. But you don't have their heart and you don't have their, their, your soul and your spirit. That is from God and it's unique and it's you. That's truly who you are, your soul. So God first, family second. Um, again, before other people, before you save the world, before you save your neighbors, before you save the widow, before you save the, 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 the troubled kids, take care of your family, take care of your spouse first and foremost. Your first responsibility after God is your spouse. If you're not doing that, get back in line with God. If you want to see the benefit of life with God, Get back and I was I was out of alignment. Uh, I was definitely ministry heavy. I love people. I love doing the stuff I did. Uh, I could do it forever. And that's a problem. That's addiction. Yeah. And you, I could do I could do it 60, 70 hours, 80 hours, and it wasn't getting tired. And so that that's not good for a woman. A spouse that loves you and they should be all alone in Ireland by yourself, and her family's here. So I had to get back in line alignment four years ago, and. Uh, and we, we did that. We took some, I took some time off and we took that and, and that's where my heart is. She's my first disciple and my kids are next. I've got to take care of my kids. If your kids are lost of the Lord and you're trying to do ministry stuff and you're trying to save the world, again, I would actually encourage you strongly, chase after your kids. Chase after your kids. Don't just stop ministry. Find something to replace you and said, go after your kids. Love your kids. Spend time with your kids. Go, go find them. What does the Lord say? Goes to, if one's lost, go find that sheep. And if, especially if it's your child. I'm not sure who else is going to have as, as much heart for that child as, as you do. Go after your kids. We teach our kids every single day. We try to teach them. As they go to school, you are a head. You're not the tail. You are a leader. As you go into that school, do not follow anyone that does uh, the wrong things just to be popular. Do not follow them. You are a head. You're a child of God. You're, you're, you have a destiny. You have a design. God, from the beginning, has designed for you. Do not go out of line. Stay in line. Your name has a reputation. It, it just started from a young age. And so and Amy's great at it as well. Uh, and the last thing, take, you know, take, look after yourself after you look after ministry people. Um, and so it's, it's amazing. It's a blessing to be a blessing. It really is. It blesses me to be able to work with people. Which I'll share the stories now. We can go to the next one. But it's, uh, and I, so I, it's a very tough for me to look after myself. And I'm trying to do a better job. So I'm right, he'll be around. i got a seven month old. i gotta, I got to be around for 30 years. Um, so, yeah. So I'm trying, to buy, I'm trying to buy a house. That's our next thing. Uh, so we've been out there 16 years in the, in the serve this community. It's the, it's the worst community in Dublin. The Lord spoke to me, go, go find the darkest community that his light will shine the brightest. And so I went and explored, and on St. Patty's Day, year 2000, all of a sudden, the, the, somebody brought me into that community, and the Holy Spirit was just pounding at my heart. My heart was leaping, exploding, and it was like, this is the place. And all of a sudden, they told the guy, stop the car, this is where the Lord wants to work. He's like, you'd come here? I'm like, hey, none of this is my project, you know, my idea, this is all the Lord's idea. Stop the car, let's go out and pray. And, uh, and so now, we're 16 years later, for the last eight years, I've been trying to buy a house in the community, build 50 houses, a community, inside the community. And so we're finally there. May uh, is supposed to be built. It's actually in process, about halfway being built right now. The bank won't give me a, won't give me a mortgage. <laughs> I got, uh, we got rejected by the bank, you know? So now I'm so close to getting to, to, to doing it, being in the community with people and having house church and stuff like that, all that stuff. And now we're that close, and the, mortgage, the bank's saying no. But God is great. Somebody here's got some money. <laughs> <laughs> the bank, the bank said no. <laughs> 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 
the, uh, the bank said no. So, but the government came in February 1st of this year, and they said, if you get rejected by two banks, we'll give you a mortgage. <laughs> and the bank was 3.5% for 11 years, because my thing had got old. <laughs> so they only gave me a mortgage for 11 years, and it was supposed to be 3.5%, and it was going to be only fixed for like either three or five years. When you're a bit old, you kind of forget all the details of things. So, uh, but then the, the government says 2% fixed all 14 years. And I was worried about the non-fixed part of the bank. So this, and I was really worried. We have historically low rates right now. So I was really nervous about years 3 to 14 or 3 to 11. So now that can be at rest. But it's still in the process. They're, they're, they're trying to, they're still evaluating. So I got a couple weeks. If I don't get it, I will come back and pick up an offering. All right? All right. So you'll see, you'll see me again before next, next year. Um, but already, even in the buildings, there's 17 homes built already. We've already been in two of the homes, blessing them. There's 20 homes built just in front of us. They took part of the land that they gave us, put, took a bath, and they put 22 homes for the homeless in front of us. And when they did that, I actually put baskets together, and we I, uh, put welcoming baskets and all this food stuff. And I went to every house and gave them uh, a basket. Um, welcome them into our community. When we didn't have our houses yet. But I wanted them to feel that they were welcome. And they were supposed to be transit. They were supposed to be just come until they get a house somewhere else. And we didn't. I didn't want that. We didn't want that community. We wanted people to stay. And uh, apparently now this is they've been here for about a year and a half. Yeah. So they they have actually told the government we want to stay. We want to you know. So it looks like they're going to be a permanent uh, community, not a transit community. So praise God. Um, so yeah. And then we want to do house house church from there. Go ahead, Lori. Next one. Uh, so transformations, right? Lord is about transformation. What did he do? He spoke, and what happened? Creation. He spoke, and he breathed into dust, and what happened? Man was formed. He spoke, and then what happened? Woman was formed. And he's still doing it. Today, I was healed. I was, I was broken. I was physically broken, right? Doctors looked at me for two years. They worked on me for two years. And then the Holy Spirit, by prayer, the Holy Spirit put me back together. My doctor was my dumb father. He was a backslidden Christian making $2 million a year, but he was a, life was a mess. And my life was a mess until I'd seen him, and then also the Holy Spirit just changed me, and also changed my body as well. And then also, he, when I showed him, after, you know, I was, I was, I'd gone missing for two years after his two years of work. And also he's seen me, and he's like, whoa, who did surgery on you? Uh, and my whole body came back. I mean, I shrunk in half, folks. I knew it was bad, and it looked bad. I looked like a, like a circus show. It looked like it was bad. And all of a sudden, God went back. God continues to do that. Did it with your life? You know? Did it, it can do it with your life? you right. Changed it. Yeah. He can take whatever, whatever state you're in, and he transforms us. And there's nothing like it. I was depressed, and I said, for a year and a half, and all of a sudden, um, when I came to Christ, the next day, the next day, all the depression lifted. God is in the business of transformation. So when we arrived first, there was nothing in the back of the school. There was all this shale stuff. And all of a sudden, we put an all-weather pitch back there, the soccer. We put this arena in there for other stuff. And then we, and the, you see the only one piece of the hall, you'll see it in a second. But the, we, did, we renovated that sports hall. And that's where we do our ministry. Right behind us is a high school. We put it all in there, cost the school and nothing. The Lord found it all through the government and myself. It was amazing. So next slide. And so this is what we do. This is some of what we do. Three festivals a year. We put bouncy slides in. I don't like bouncy castles. Kids bang heads. I get lost in so we don't want that. We have bouncy slides. And they slide down one at a time. Uh, we have carnival games. We give them food and have fun. Um, and it's uh, a great day just to engage with the community. It's part of it. And we don't preach. We just engage. We play some music. We give them food. The biggest business owner in our community has actually teamed up with us now. And when we go back to Easter, he's going to put on all the barbecue. He's got a new truck that he's going to bring to the, the festival. And we actually have barbecue up front for all the people. Next slide. And so the other thing we do is camps. Three times a year we do sports camps, arts and crafts, and dance camps. So the kids come. Probably about, at this, the first one we ever had 15 years ago, three kids showed up the very first day. I had four leaders. <laughs> And that was, a government, that was a government's job of actually getting the kids there. And so then I took over that job quite quick after that. Uh, but I came from Springfield. I actually come from Springfield, Massachusetts, Huntington, right? And so when I told my story, I was actually 
teaching basketball in all the schools, and I would tell the kids I come from Springfield. Do you guys know who else comes from Springfield? The Simpsons. Very good. What's the number one show in Ireland? The Simpsons. Unbelievable. I have never watched it before in my life. God can use anything. So the kids loved me because I came from Springfield. I know the Simpsons. But I was, I mean, I went from here, to, uh, no, no one knew me, to me, like that instant, suddenly, just in a moment of time. And it was like, they, they've never forgotten that. That's Coach Dan, he comes from Springfield, he knows the Simpsons. <laughs> so now we're up to over 150 kids in our camps, uh, three times a year. Arts and crafts, dance, sports, we do all three other things. And our biggest thing is actually a, a oppression. I need to break oppression in our community. It is massive in, in the nation of Ireland. Uh, oppression, depression, suppression, suicide, mental illness is rampant all throughout the country, but especially in the Valley of as well. And I'm not, in America, we really don't have that problem. We are, if you never left here, you would actually wouldn't know the difference. When you go there, I mean, talk about polar opposites. American person going over there, we are extremely loud, we are extremely confident, we are we, we really come across as arrogant because we're so confident. But that's just what America is. But we beat, I mean, because of God, I mean, again, this was a God story. America is a God story. If you've never read the story, read the story. It is a God story. They left Europe so they could be freely worshiping him, him here in this land. And they beat the English with not much. And England was the power, the world power. So with not much, God defeated the English. And so we as a people have actually been superly positive ever since. We can do anything. And we can. But not there. It's the opposite. They, they feel they can't do anything. And I gotta smash that. So we, our job is to, to really pump in self-esteem into these kids. And we do an amazing work. And the kids are changed in four days. Parents cannot believe the difference in these kids in four days when God puts into them and what we do for our leaders. And it's amazing. These kids, they can't, they, they're so excited. They always ask their parents, when's, when's Coach Dan's camp, next camp? When's next Co Coach Dan's next camp? They call me before the holidays and try to play their holidays. When's your next camp? I, we can't book during your holiday. We can't book a holiday or a vacation during your camp because my kids will go for spastic. Um, and so that's what, so even now, we go back, April 2nd is the next camp. We already had like 50 people sign up for camp uh, already before, you know, I mean, open up camp and roll again. So here we go. Next slide. Uh, and so that's the kids stuff. And then so in the, with adults, the wise, um, Amy and I work with these, um, with uh, this, this campaign called National uh, Ireland for Jesus that came through last year. And I, I was really the, kind of the person that admin wise took care of the whole thing. And from that, a lot of miracles happen. A lot of people come to Christ. Um, and, but the biggest thing is that unity. We, ha we actually had unity. People working together from different denominations and staying together. We actually help each other now. We're, I'm speaking at different places, different churches, different uh, styles. And again, denomination for me, I don't even believe in it. I don't think it's in the Bible. I, I, I'm still looking for it in the Bible. It, it looks like it's just a kingdom. I'm not sure what you see when you read it, but it, there's a kingdom. Uh, I, don't, I'm not, I, I was raised in the Catholic Church. Uh, I, don't have, I went to saved by a Baptist minister in terms of the prayer. I uh, went to Pentecostal churches. I've gone to all the different churches, different styles. It's, it's just a style. That's all it is. And it's, uh, it really is like the kingdom. Kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. God said to create a kingdom. And that's what it is. And there's no, nothing in there that's our denomination. Those are all kind of created because of what man's doctrine stuff that people started. There's nothing wrong with it in some, in some ways, different styles. And that's fine. But it is a one kingdom. Um, but so that, yeah, we, so we have a heart and bowl uh, intercession prayer thing that happens now monthly over there because of that. Uh, and then also a leaders, church leaders network that we started as well to work together. Uh, discipleship we do with it as well. So a lot of these kids we had in our youth group, Amy is now, like, girls will come over and have dinner with us, and they will actually they just talk with Amy, you know, uh, and just walk through life with them. A lot of times they don't have a very stable family life. Uh, if anyone would do it, that'd be a miracle. Um, so it's actually great that they can come over and just talk to Amy, uh, the girls wise, and, and, and again, none of the Christian value stuff that we would believe in, they never would be taught. So you know, we, we are foreign, alien, uh, but the kids love it. They, they know this is the way. Um, for me, I actually, I, I uh, disciple some addicts as well uh, on a weekly basis. 
Um, and then there's um, some guys basketball that came through our programs, uh, upward basketball programs that we did years ago. So there's 28 year olds, there's five of those guys, there's four 18 year olds, and I play basketball with them on Sundays. You know, and I just run them down twice their age, or three times their age, or some of them. And uh, but I play with them just to stay engaged with them, to stay in their lives, see how they're doing, and then get a chance to advantage. I love it. It gives, gives me a, some movement, which is good. Um, and then, so mom, mom's in prayer as well. So Amy, two months ago, uh, she's been on her heart for a long time. Said, I'm going to start a mom's uh, prayer group for, uh, for school. And I think it's called Moms of Prayer. And so then she told us all the three teachers at the school, and then she told all the parents, you know, come to my house for prayer uh, for your kids. And we're going to pray for our kids. And uh, so two months ago, it was just Amy and I. <coughs> Last month, it was just Amy and I. And so here's, here's what I really want you to get from there, because we're, we're blessed, and it, it's been a blessing for Amy and I, and we actually already had seen a miracle from it as well in prayer. But don't look, when you plant seed, you don't get instant plants, do you? takes time. And so don't look at the results of things. When, when God invests in you and tells you to do something, and you, you, that's a seed. He's telling you to harvest. He's telling you to, to plant seeds, dig toil up, and then plant seeds. Take, it takes time. Don't get discouraged and give up. This is going to be fruitful. This is going to be fruitful. It's been fruitful already. It's going to be fruitful. I'm not sure where it's going to go, but we, I'm not concerned about the fact that it's just Amy and I. And it's fine. I mean, what's wrong with having a prayer time with my wife? about our kids, and the kids of the school, and the teachers that are teaching my kid, and the, to the other students that are in school with my kids. So that's a good thing anyways. But uh, don't get discouraged by numbers. It's all about the heart. Um, and I, I pray meekly with a guy named Sean, and I'll, I'll show you a picture of Sean in a second. Uh, he's a ch church leader, and uh, the toughest, I'm in, in the toughest community, he's in the second toughest, which is the toughest community I, start, I currently live in. Um, but Sean is uh, quite an interesting story. Um, and then we do Teen Challenge, which is a Teen Challenge bus. I'll show you in a second, the bus. Uh, every week, Tuesday night from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock, uh, we started three years ago. Um, a bus comes in and gives tea, coffee, sandwiches, clothes to addicts, uh, people living in addiction. And uh, from that, again, if, if, you, if you know anybody in addiction, probably everybody here somehow almost does. It, it, it's pretty widespread throughout the world. Um, it's very... Uh, <coughs> Devastating. It ruins families. So they were, people who live in addiction, they have lied, stealing, stolen, uh, destroyed uh, their families. And so they don't have anybody that they can really talk with in relationship with. But these guys have now come, the last three years they've come together, and we have now a, a great family. We are a community uh, with, each other, with each other, as well as the people that, uh, that serve them. Now we are a family, and it, these are our friends. And so, uh, and then also, Amy did a great job in terms of pro-life uh, movement. They have a big referendum in May, um, which is actually the, the government is actually getting the vote to the people whether or not uh, abortion is allowed in Ireland. It never has been. Um, a couple years back, they had same-sex referendum that passed, but we, we're hoping, praying that our uh, little Ireland will be the one place in the world that will actually stand up against the tsunami of abortion and uh, to be a voice to the voiceless. And Amy's been a big part of that. Um, and so she was, yeah, even yesterday, she was at the march uh, for pro-life, and there's between 5,000 and 100,000. really don't know the number, but it's somewhere between 5,000 and 100,000 people marched yesterday for pro-life in Dublin. Uh, and then we have again, house groups is what we're going towards uh, in the days ahead. Next, next go. There's the bus. Next one. So then we had a Christmas uh, party uh, this past Christmas, and we served uh, uh, a nice roast dinner, and then we had music, uh, Christian music, and uh, Christmas music as well, but it was, uh, it was rocking the place. These guys were all dancing. Um, and then um, they gave me hampers as well, so the Christmas hamper with all this food and stuff that they, they, they took home. And as they were leaving there, they were singing the, the, Christmas, the Christian songs, not the Christmas songs, the Christian songs they were singing on the way out. They were loving it. And I had a message for them, and uh, they were well, well received. But it is a race against time. If you know anybody in addiction, it's a race against time. Um, and the present lifestyle, kidneys break down, livers break down, mental illness, suicide, all that stuff happens. So we lost five people last year, um, and that was really devastating. Some of them very close. The gentleman here in the green shirt with his uh, that tattoos, he was one of them. Um, he just died two months ago. His brother died like six months prior to that. Uh, he's probably, I think, 38 years old, 39 years old. 
so it's a raise at this time in our work with them, trying to get them to rehab before they die. Yeah. Um, next. But there's an enemy, it's a real enemy that comes to steal, kill, rob, and destroy. He wants to he wants to snuff out life because you're made in the image of God. And he does not like the image of God, does he? The enemy hates the image of God. He can't stand that's why he can't stand humanity, is because they're made in the image of God. And the enemy wants to be revered. The enemy wants to be worshipped. But our job is to worship God Almighty. And to say no to the enemy. These th this couple here just got married to uh, in January. And um, so they were former addicts. They met uh, after getting rehabbed, and then they started serving in the, in, uh, in the city. And they started serving people, and they, that's how they met. And they started dating. And then their daughter, uh, his daughter, was actually working in our camp, working with Archie Craft. And she said, "You got to meet uh, Coach Dan." And so they came and met me, and then now they serve us uh, in the bus. Um, and then they got married in January, in January, and then they had a baby uh, in. Two weeks later, and the baby is fake. Yeah. So it's not the way that I would design it. <laughs> it's not the way that it's pro properly done for the Lord. But grace for those, that I need grace and grace for them. And so it was quite interesting. His nephew came through our programs. Up in Valley Mun, came through all our programs, right? His nephew. And now he's a chef for President Donald Trump in Florida. Oh, unbelievable. Here we go, next slide. So Thomas, if I haven't ever told you about Thomas, Thomas the former addict, I know Thomas for 10 years, uh, got involved with him through Alpha programs, but he was up and down bipolar, his family is littered with mental illnesses and, uh, for everybody, and so it's been a long journey with Thomas. But Thomas, uh, probably about a year, year and a half ago, decided, you know what, I can't do this, I can't do life anymore with people. He left his partner with his girlfriend, like girlfriend and two daughters, and he went into the woods of Balimon, and into a tent. And it is just living in a tent. And I just I kept journeying with Thomas, and finally said, Thomas said yes to going to Teen Challenge uh, in rehab. And so Thomas has been there for 11 months now, and Thomas is on fire. Thomas is lit up, Thomas is gaining weight, Thomas is up, he's illuminating. His, his partner now is actually off drugs. Um, his, brother, his brother there is uh, alcohol, alcohol, alcohol because of this transformation, seeing the transformation of Thomas. And so that helps people say yes to God. So praise God for that work in Thomas. So here's Sean. This is this is an amazing story. Sean, um, I he says six six. Uh, so I, I met Sean in, in 2008. Sean was a big criminal in Dalimon. He sold drugs. He killed people. He robbed banks. Uh, he was a big dealer. And um, he, uh, so in six oh six, his brother died in prison just before that, and then all of a sudden he cried out to God, and God came into his cell and lit up the cell. And all of a sudden, Sean gave his life to the Lord. I met him two years later. I was leading a Southern <coughs> church with men's ministry stuff. And so Sean came, I heard about Sean, I had Sean speak. Sean's called and I just said, man, let's take up an offering. We launched this guy into the 12 step and He was leading 12-step programs. We launched him to ministry in 12 steps. I kept journeying with Sean the last 10 years. Sean um, then got married to uh, Thelma, and that's Thelma's two kids, so he's a father, he's a great father. And he's got other kids as well, daughters that he's a great father too. Um, I kept, kept, kept training with Sean, I did a lot of outreaches, Sean did a lot of outreaches in Valley Month with me. Here's a former dealer coming back into the community, speaking, engaging with the community, and he had a whole bunch of dealer uh, addicts who came and stuff like that, it was amazing. And so he kept going, working with Sean, and Sean now, uh, I got him connected with the Elam Pentecostal Church movement, and so he's now a minister. And a minister to church, the toughest community, the second, second, second toughest community in Delta. And uh, where's the you know? That's amazing. And he met a cop in the library not long ago, he said a couple months ago. And he said, you know, he went to the cop and says, You'll never guess what I'm doing now. And the cop says, uh, Yeah, please tell me, Sean, what are you doing now? <laughs> he says, I'm a minister of God. The guy's like, Whoa! <laughs> That's amazing. And he is, he, he is the best wow. at going after people getting the addicted, getting them into his church, and then not only getting them clean, but restoring, which is so important, restoring their family back again. It's an amazing, amazing story. It's awesome. And it's so funny. So we, like last month, two months ago, I was actually, Lord, you've been here 16 years. There's some difference. We've, we've seen, I mean, we've, we've seen some good transformations in people, places, and things. But Lord, we want, we want more. But how can we change this community? What, you know, what really needs to be done, Lord? And the Lord said, you've got to find 
the committed people and work with the committed people. Get, that, get people that really committed and get them on side down. I'm like, yeah, 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 that's a great idea of the Holy Spirit. And I said, okay, so, you know, um, what are we going to do? He's like, uh, I didn't know. I said, he says, are you committed? <laughs> me? Of course I'm me committed? Yeah. I left 16 years ago. Yeah, I'm with you. This is the journey. This is your journey. I'm with you. I'm committed. Are you willing to die? Yeah, I'm willing to die. I have no fear of death. Thank you that you took it away from me. I like all, I look and the die is me. Yes, I, I will die. Go find a drug dealer. Ten drug dealers in our community. They're ravaging probably about a thousand people out of fifteen thousand people in our community. And I'm talking kids, kids down to ten years old. And so uh, he goes, go back to those ten. You pray for them. You ask God for their hearts. And if they, if they don't come to me, then you just make sure that they, they're exposed and we're gonna get them out of the out of the community. And so that's what we I started to pray. A month later, I mean, every every single week, awesome things were happening. So a, a month ago, Sean and I prayed. At the end of the, of the prayer time, all of a sudden, uh, these two, one guy comes in and he starts, you know, come walking down. He, he, he can tell he's jittery and something like that. But uh, so we practically start praying for them. He wants he's a, he's an addict. And he wanted prayer. He wants to go to rehab. So he prays. He prays. So this is amazing. And then another guy comes. Because Sean had left me. He did it outside. And I go, where did he go? And he's one of those guys. <laughs> so so next guy comes in. It, it's his brother. The other guy's brother. And he comes down and he's like, you know, bigger and stronger. And, uh, and he's wobbly as well. And he's like looking around as he's coming in this way. And we're in our shack. We're in a warehouse. We're in a little shed, you know. And this guy, he's like, this is amazing. I'm like, amazing. <laughs> this, this is, there's something about this place. And he's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Sean's like, sit down. He goes, uh, you know, come here. Dan, you tell him your story. So I told him about my depression story, about how I was depressed. And Austin came to the Lord. And then Austin was gone. Just like that. I told him I was broken. My body was broken. And Austin, the Lord gave me just like that. And I was 65,000 in debt, and the Lord spoke to me and started tithing. And all of a sudden, I was out of debt in three years. And all of a sudden, I just, just hit them with the things that the Lord has done in my life and stuff. And all of a sudden, this guy's like, whoa, this is awesome. And he's like, oh. And he goes, this is, this is amazing. And uh, so I said, like, what's your story? And he goes, oh. For the first time, I was actually putting all this stuff out on my, on my, uh, in my house. And uh, it was the, the lines and stuff like that, you know? And, this, and he says, uh, I was putting it all, I just said, I want to be done with this. I want to be done with this. And I can't believe this. I'm, I'm, is, is this real? Are you, what are you telling me? Is this real? And they knew Sean's story. This guy was a, this guy was a dealer. He was a dealer. He walked in. He knew Sean. And he walked in into our place and we're praying with him. And he's like, I want to be done. I want to be done with this stuff. And it's like, oh, yeah. It's just amazing what God can do with and the guy can do anything. The guy actually, his brother, live on my street that I live on right now. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. And he's like, and he, couldn't, he couldn't believe it. He's like, ah, oh, man. And he goes, I want what you guys got. And that's the power that we walk in. That's the power. I, we, it was just all God, all spirit. But again, we didn't invite them. They showed up, you know. And so it's amazing. So many different stories like that. Um, right? For, for time's sake, I'm just going to go to the next one. Yeah? So now the other thing we do is actually annually this guy uh, Noel Kenyon the bar your left he's a he's a minister as well his, he had like three or four brothers die of AIDS from uh, drugs he was an addict himself many years ago he's been clean probably thirty years but um, each Christmas fourteen hundred people now we serve see those big campers that's a, there's chickens in there there's a whole bunch of this, this everything you need for a Christmas dinner it's putting there fourteen hundred of those we distribute to all the most disadvantaged communities disadvantaged houses there's some barren places out there. And we put them in, and uh, we stop and get those things out to each business. Raise about three thousand dollars a week. But no, it was amazing. It, the, you ever hear the uh, machine gun preacher? Uh, he's actually speaking at Noel's church today, uh, right now. So next slide. And so community transformation. We're all about transformation in the community. So I'm actually working with the principals uh, in the schools. I'm looking with all the business owners and the guard, the police people as well, um, trying to bring in community together, transformation, having some e economy, having some money coming in, getting kids educated, and make sure they can read and write by the time they're age 10 years old, so that way they'll stay in school, because if they don't read and write by age 10, they drop out, and they're into the drug scene. So we have to get them educated, we have to get them reading and writing early on, and then work with the after-school programs, get them resources. <laughs> but uh, we're waging war on the impossible. And God, that's why God says, he's, he, what does he say? He goes, go find the darkest place so his light will shine the brightest. Right? And that, that t-shirt, that jumper, is a uh, sweatshirt, sorry, 
is uh, way too hard and impossible. Katie Taylor, uh, she's an Irish girl, <coughs> the first woman boxer in Ireland. She ended up winning the uh, Olympic gold medal. She's winning to stall. She went got them. She was the ambassador to get them and uh, put women's boxing in the Olympics. She won the gold medal. She's a world champion right now. She's actually in Connecticut. She's, she moved to Connecticut. She's trained in Connecticut right now. But that's her T-shirt. Wage war and the impossible. Next, those are some of the issues, the type of stuff that's going on. Um, so even one of the things is a community center having a community center right in the heart of the community. Business owners and myself cooperating, coming together, ask the government to give us the, the land that's a, a shopping center, right? That used to be four or five years now, it's been derelict, it's been empty. We want to take that over, and we have, from my part, that we actually a community center cafe for adults to come, tea, coffee, learn what their issues are, help them overcome their issues. Uh, at nighttime, youth cafe for kids to come in, and then on the weekends, it's for families to gather and play games and get to with each other. Uh, and then we actually have worship service and prayer time as well. So that's it there. I think that's, that's, that's it. Yeah, those, those are our needs. So again, 125000 the bank would give, the government would give us a mortgage, not the bank. And if not, I'll, I'll be back to take over an offering. Um, and then, uh, yeah, if you, ever want to, if you ever want to have teams come over Easter camp, um, this, this day after Easter, every year, day after Easter, we have a week-long camp festival in the camps. So if you ever want to have a team come over, not 25, uh, but uh, maybe <laughs> either two, three, four, five, six, something like that. <coughs> And then just keep praying for us. I'll be out, out back after, after prayer here. Uh, I'll be out back, of course. I'll stay around if anybody wants to talk to me. There's a trick prayer table out there as well, or a table out there about our stuff. And you can contact me by the email address. No phone, the phone numbers don't work on there. Don't do that, okay? But uh, just use just use email, is5589 at yahoo.co. Okay? So that's the ministry part, and I don't have, I don't have much time left. So here's, here's what we're going to do for you guys. There's a message for you guys today. So please hear it. Uh, when I was here last time, the Lord spoke to me. I, I very clearly, the Holy Spirit said that you guys were going to be a, 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 an opportunity to, to, to reach the, the, you know, the, the, this area and uh, to, to get ready. And certainly that's what happened at, you know, with Pastor Ryan and Luke. So that, that was, that was a, a situation that, uh, again, out of, when the dark times come, it's when times that really the light can shine the brightest. That you don't lose your hope. That's right. You don't lose your hope. Okay? But we need to be ready. And so here's, so I asked the Lord, Holy Spirit today on the way over. I was coming over to Connecticut Bridge um, from West Springfield. And also the sun was shining so brightly. And I'm just saying, Holy Spirit, what do you have for these people, this, this body of people, your, your people? And he says, I'm, 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 uh, I'm still here. The Son of God is still here in this church. You don't have a senior pastor, but you have uh, the Foss. The Foss of God is here. Jesus is the head of the church. Amen. This is a body, but Jesus at the head. It's time to rise up. It's time for you to rise up. In times of disarray, which you have you've gone through a devastating time. You have gone through a devastating time. You are in a devastating time. But do not give up. What did it look like for Jesus on Friday? Did it look good for Jesus on Friday? No. No. What do you think about the apostles? Do you think the apostles were pretty cheerful on Friday and Saturday? It did not look good then, did it? No. But they were faithful to what Jesus said. Jesus said, just wait. Wait, and I will give you a counselor. I will give you the power of the Holy Spirit. When you came to Christ, the blood at the cross wiped away your sins. The Holy Spirit didn't wipe away your sins. The blood at the cross wiped away your sins. Amen. But he said, wait for the Spirit of God. That's right. The Holy Spirit is the one that actually set Jesus free. Amen. It wasn't his blood, it was the Holy Spirit. The blood sets you free from your sins. You've been forgiven. You've been washed. No matter what you did. I've got some guys that, you know, they used to wash the blood that they killed people. They washed the stuff off the floor. Jesus sets you free. No matter what your past is. Don't be ashamed. That's the enemy. He's condemning you. Jesus came to set you free. And he said, who I made the son that set free is free indeed. The enemy comes to steal, kill, rob, destroy. He uses words. He uses your past. He uses the things that you but you should be ashamed of. And you should be ashamed of them because they are the things you did when you were lost. When you were when he was your father. The enemy was your father. But now that you, you have a new father, now that you said yes to the Lord, you confess with your tongue, you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, 
You were set free. The Holy Spirit came into your life. You have a deposit guaranteeing your future. Not only your future, but your today. Today there's a new day. You are a new creation. You are a new person. You are not what you used to be. So when the enemy uses those words that you are fat, you are ugly, you are stupid. Oh, don't remember this, don't you remember that. You just tell him to shut up because he's not your man. No. You are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. There is none like you in all the earth. Psalm 139 says you are unique the way he made you. You are unique. Ephesians 2.10 says you are gifted. He prepares you. A special thing for you to do. Only you to do. So it's our time to rise up. In this time. That's right. not, not some future time when we get a senior pastor. It's now, folks. Yeah. This is the hour. Yeah. This is the time.
Remember what he's doing for you. Remember what he did for everybody. Listen to each other's testimonies. There's amazing stories here. Amazing stories. This is a real God with a real power Amen. to transform lives. Not only yours, but all around the Pioneer Valley. Through his vessels. And he searches here and wide, long and wide. Whom shall I send? Who will go? My children are dying. My children are lost. There's devastation all around. All around. You don't know part. Everywhere you look, there's devastation from this enemy of the king. But there is a king. And he's got kids who love him. And they he's invested in his kids. And an inheritance. A rich inheritance. And a power beyond anything you can believe. He can do it. And when the enemy lies, those are just words, folks. He's a liar. He's got worthless words that stop you and me. We're going to play that song. Uh, yeah. The song is, I'm no longer a slave to fear. The Lord's put it on my heart. Fear is stopping us. Fear is an enemy that's never going to attack you. But perfect love drives out fear. God's perfect love. He loves you. He loves you so much he gave his son. That's not a story. That's a true thing. And he loves you so much he has that gift live by you. So pour yourself back into your prayer closet. Remember all the beautiful things he's done. Listen to testimonies. Go to videos, Christian videos. See what God is doing throughout the earth. It's amazing stories. Watch those videos. Stop watching TV. That's stupid stuff that's just killing our brains and killing our spirit. Take that off. Show them. Watch videos of what God's doing. God's stuff. It's amazing. You guys want to pray? I'm going to pray for you guys. Yeah? Yes. God, Lord Jesus, come. Yes. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Jesus, come as you are, folks. Don't have to, don't, don't try to strive and become better and clean. God does that. That's his work. That's the Spirit's work. He'll clean you up. He cleaned me up. I was a mess. You were a mess before you came to him. Not that I knew you, but I just know him. I know what he does. You do too. Remember what he does. Fear not, he told Joshua as he went to the promised land. Be strong. Be courageous. This is a year of cur being courageous. Be courageous. You have courage. You have bravery. Your spirit is not a timid spirit. You have a brave spirit that God has invested in you and put in you. And the enemy knows that. The enemy wants to shut you up. The enemy wants to sit you down. But you are a child of God. You are a child of God. Get it in your spirit. It's in the Bible. He loves you. He loves everybody around you. Operate from that premise that God is alive. Jesus is alive. The Holy Spirit is alive. He'll fire you up by day. And you give him praise by night. When you hit the bed, you give him praise for all that he did. He's amazing. There's no one like our God. There's no one like our God. Don't throw him to do what our God is. Don't throw him. Don't throw him. Donald Trump. Donald Trump can't do what God can do. No God. We've already seen God work. Well, you didn't have Donald in the presence. Hallelujah. If you've never been born again, if you don't know that you're a child of God, if you don't know how to come to Christ, if you don't know the, the sacrifice that he did at the cross for you, if you don't know about his blood paid for all your sins and all your ways, then you can see me at the, at the, anybody up in the front here at the end to come forward. For those other people, uh, I'm going to pray in a second, um, but just, uh, you want to come forward. If you want prayer for anything, whether it's healing, whether it's a, uh, to be uh, baptized again in the Spirit of God, in the fire of God, uh, if you want prayer for some kind of thing in your life, just come forward at the end. And again, it's not just me. This isn't about me. You can be here. You can share your chair too. Just mostly pray to, pray to God. Pray to Spirit. He's the one that's doing anything. It's not me. I'm not special. It's really the Holy Spirit, folks. 
and the, the, the God is himself. And he, and he has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. So, Lord, I just pray, thank you, Lord, for this family. Thank you for all the people that, Lord, that you have brought in over the years, Lord God. Thank you for our restoration and what you have done through these people, how you transformed them from what they were to what they are. And, Lord, you're not done with them yet. You're, you're still on a journey with them, just like you were with Moses and Joshua, Lord God. You're still taken to a promised land, to a better land, Lord God, to where it flows with milk and honey. Your, your, your days, your better days are ahead still. It doesn't matter what happened in the past. It doesn't matter what this church was or, or what just happened. It's not important to God. God says, you keep following me. You keep obedient to me. Joshua seen the promised land because he was obedient to the end. Lord God, you bless us because you are wonderful, Lord 
Lord God, and you love us, Lord Jesus. You're more powerful than anything in this world, Lord. We praise you, we thank you, we honor you, we, we bring glory to your name for all that you have done, are doing, and will do through your people. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you.